I'm Becky Mitchell from the Becker County Museum. Welcome back to the Museum Roadshow. Today we're going to continue our interview with Russell Kent with a little help from his daughter Mary Tyken and they're going to continue talking about the journey of raising horses and how they form those relationships and how they've even appeared in some movies. The first team I bought after I retired was uh, Beauty and Queen. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then I, I went in the barn one morning and pet, or not, not Beauty and Queen, it was yeah. Pet and Queen. And uh, Pet laid there dead. And it turned out she had a, a genetic defect that shows up. And her, the grandson of Man of War was the dad of those two horses. He was a famous racehorse way back. And uh, that was a genetic defect that showed up in her. Charlie. Oh, Pete and Charlie? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got them from down by Wadena. Yeah. Yeah, they were strawberry roans uh, crossed with American cream. And, uh, oh, they were beautiful. They had, uh, sides were strawberry, but down the back, they had a cream stripe about so wide down their backs. Oh, they were pretty. And we trained them to pull, trained them, hooked them on a stone boat to train them to pull good. That's the best way to train horses to pull is on a stone boat, hauling rock in the field. And uh, they turned out, and then we sold them out in buildings. And, uh, oh gosh, I got Topsy out in Dakota too. And uh, then I wanted a mate for her and Larry, my son, he used to come up and he says, Dad, there's a lady down by New York Mills that has a black stallion that she wants to sell. And so we went down to look at her, I did, and um, the gal, she said, well, you can't go in that pen because he's a killer. She says, he'll kill you. And I said, well, if I'm interested in buying him, I've got to g get up close to him and check him out. And uh, so she had him in a little corral by the barn, and he was in the middle of the corral, and I just very slowly walked up to him. And it took me probably an hour, and I kept talking to him, and his eyes were fire red, and his ears laid straight back on his neck. You could tell he was he was just not a happy horse. Anyway, I got about four feet from him and still talking to him and his eyes turned blue. And, and I very slowly started to pet him on the withers and on the neck and uh, he, was, he wasn't mean to me and uh, so I bought him and brought him home, and he turned out to be one of the quietest, gentlest, just uh, perfect horse. He was absolutely perfect. And he was my stallion for a while. I raised six colts from him. Eight, Dad. Eight. Or was it eight? eight? Yeah, I guess so, eight colts from him. I forgot the mother, too. Anyway, uh, whenever I'd go out to the pasture or by the fence, he'd come running right up to me so that he could be petted. He was just my friend. And uh, when we hooked him up the first time, he took right off just like he'd been driven. He listened to me, he had no trouble with him, whatever. He was just a beautiful animal. Tell him about Babe and Pearl. And then I had a big team of bays that we bought out in Western North Dakota. They were full sisters. We had them trained so good. They went out west too, and they're, they're at the uh, Sombrero. Uh, Sombrero Ranches now. Mark Bishop is the manager of the Sombrero Ranches, and they use them for sleigh rides in the wintertime. Dude ranches in the summertime, they put saddles on them. Weddings? Uh, yeah, for whatever. and. They drive them in weddings and movies, and they furnish horses in movies and everything, too. Uh, the movie called Lonesome Dove, they furnished all the horses for that movie. And that was before I knew Bill Mark, but uh, 
So Duke and Duchess are in the remake of the Lone Ranger. Yeah. And then uh, some of the Marlboro commercials. I've had a couple quarter horses that a white one. She's in that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Cowboys and Aliens. There's um, some of Dad's horses. Are yeah, in, in that. that movie. Uh, four uh, red duns on a stagecoach. Yeah. Who raised and trained here. They're, They're they were full sisters. brothers and sisters to those two right back there. It's funny watching the movie. I could pick out the different horses that people were riding that we trained here at home. Harrison Ford is riding Beauty. Yeah, he rode her in the in the movie. Yeah. In the movie, and then he, I yeah. think he bought her. I always kind of teased Mark Bishop. Yeah, he runs the Sombrero Ranches that I should have kept some royalties on these horses because uh, I, I, being they were in the movies, I could have made a little extra money on them. Just about every horse I've had has been in a movie somewhere out there. At least I trained them so that the horses were safe for other people to ride and handle. I'm glad I could do that. I've had a lot of fun with it. I'm getting a little too old to do it now, but I still drive a team every once in a while, so. How old are you? Uh, I'll be 90 uh, the 13th of July. Yeah. So, oh yeah, I had the red duns out the other day. I drove them for five miles. And my arms got a little sore by the time I got back, but that's all right. Yeah. I enjoy it. And uh, uh, talking to your horses, is really important because they will listen. Yeah. Even listen better than some of my kids when they were growing up. <laughs> uh, oh well. But no, I, I shouldn't have said that because. Dad, that's funny, Dad. Sometimes they do. I, I probably shouldn't have said that because my wife and I had 10 children, eight girls and two boys. and. They all turned out to be very fine people, so I'm proud of every one of them. Yeah. Thank you for joining us for today's show with Russell Kent. He's, he's now past his 91st birthday, and it's been such a pleasure to listen to him share his love of horses and the journey that it's brought him throughout his life.